hello everyone. Welcome. Um, nice to meet you all. Although I can't, uh, I'm staring at my screen right now, which is just my slides. <laughs> but uh, welcome everyone. And uh, it's, it's very nice to be here. And um, yeah. So today I'll be talking about uh, introduction to Svelte Actions. Um, so it's a feature of Svelte. Uh, it's like a, yeah, it's called the Svelte Actions. And I, before we dive into the topic itself, let me share a bit more like who am I? Well, so once again, um, my name is Li Hao. Um, so I'm a software engineer at Shopee. And currently, um, I, I was like working on some open source projects and currently I'm like a, a co-maintainer of Svelte. Uh, it's, it's just like um, making some fixes on Svelte and then, yeah, suddenly I become like co-maintainer. But uh, recently, I have more of my focus on uh, making content, um, educational content about Svelte or JavaScript or front-end stuff, right? So uh, I guess that's like how COVID changed us where it's like thinking of like um, maybe trying out multiple stuff, different things. And one of the things that I'm trying is like making YouTube videos and having fun doing it. Well, if you want to support me, probably subscribe to my channel, you know, uh, maybe or maybe propose any interesting things that you want to see me building and probably I'll just make them, right? Because I was not really sure what other things that I can make. Uh, so still discovering. So uh, first of all, uh, what is Svelte? Um, yeah, so it's, it's like, I would say like it's another front-end framework. Um, like React or Angular, if you're familiar with them, or Vue.js, right? Svelte is, I guess you can categorize it as like a front-end framework in, in those category, right? Um, and it's a little bit different from um, React and Vue and Angular uh, in a sense that a bit, okay, it's, it's a bit different with React where most of the stuff that is happening it's happening during the build time where it compiles your code into uh, like plain JavaScript, right? So you write a code that looks like Svelte code, which I'm gonna show you later. And it will take that code and compile it to just JavaScript code that will get run on a browser. So most of the stuff like figuring out like uh, reactivity, figuring out stuff actually done during the compilation step. Whereas for Java, uh, for React, um, you probably write um, JSX, which is still just, which is just a sugar syntax for JavaScript, which uh, it's like building uh, like a view. Okay, I'm, I, I guess I'm, I'm very bad at describing this, but yeah, it's, it's uh, most of the heavy lifting of the reactivity for React happens on the runtime, which is while you're executing the code. Whereas figuring out all the stuff mostly happens in the build time for Svelte. Um, so this would be, so I guess just to like make you guys have a sense of like how Svelte looks like, this is a component written in React. You have a function called component. Uh, you have states by using a hooks like use states. And then you return like a div with two buttons and accounts. Right, uh, the same thing can be written with uh, Svelte like this, where as you can see here, it feels more like HTML, right? And you can declare states like this variable count, just declare it like a variable as compared to here, you will have to call like a use states to get that state variable, where here you're just declaring, a, you declare a variable and it will behave like a state. And for stylings, you can have a style tag, which for example, in this case, you add padding to the div and you will only apply it to the div that is written within this file, right? So it is kind of like having like inline style, but it's not, it's actually adding styles to uh, using selectors in a CSS, um, but it will only apply to the div that you're, the div that's written within this file. 
then I guess slightly different would be say for example the uh, li uh, on click listener, right? So now you use things like it feels a bit like template where you have directives which is like something a colon and something, right? So you have like on colon click which allows you to add like a click listener uh, versus like on click as a property for that uh, attribute or property for your buttons, right? And one thing you will notice different is that um, I, to update accounts, I use count plus plus, I can modify the variable directly. Um, somehow when it compiles to JavaScript code, it handles that nicely and make sure that the counts variable is reactive. Right, uh, whereas in, in React, you are calling a set count. Um, yeah, basically besides this, it looks pretty much the same. It's just happenings, different things happening under the hood, right? So uh, if I believe that I've been mentioning that there's like compilation stuff happening under the hood, um, if you feel that it feels foreign to you, you have no idea what I'm trying to say. Um, actually, I did a talk uh, about compiling Svelte in your head in TalkJS, I can't remember, a few months ago. So I'll probably find a link and, or you can find that in Engineer SG as they recorded everything, right? Um, oh, it's also on my YouTube channel. So you can find that there as well, right? So let's go to like one of the features of Svelte, which is Svelte Actions, which is what I'm going to share with you all today. So Svelte Actions, uh, is like an um, directives as well. So previously we have a directive that looks like on and then colon and click, right? That allows you to do like event listener on that element. Right now you have a new one, which is use colon and then action. And then you can pass parameters within it, right? So in Svelte syntax, when you want to pass in like expressions, so prob probably you would wrap it with like curly brackets, right? So this is like, this params is passing into this action. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, synthetically, it, it, semantically, it means like this. Uh, but what, what actually does it mean is that uh, you can define any fun you can define a function called action. So what it means is that action is actually a function. It's just a normal function. Um, so one thing you know, notice here is that it has to be the same name, right? So uh, when you use action here, you are referring to a variable, which is a function that is defined within your scope, right? It could be defining in your script tag over here, or it can be a global variable or anywhere you import from. As long as you import the name, the variable, of the, the name of the action matches with this, then you will use this function action, right? Uh, yeah, I haven't covered like how it used, but you will use this function as an action. And this function itself is, um, like some sort of contractual between Svelte is, uh, that there's like this function is just a normal function, but you can have two parameters which I'll be passing in to you, right? I'll pass you when you, when this div is uh, mounted onto the screen, right? Uh, Svelte will call this function with the element, which is this div, the div that is just mounted and params will be whatever the parameters like it's written over here uh, in, your, in your elements, right? So which means that you can have multiple divs that use the same action, but passing a different params, then this action function will be called multiple times with different elements and different parameters. And if this function itself returns an object, then another interesting thing will happen is that uh, whenever someone changes the params, for example, uh, change the value of the params, um, then the updates method in this object will be called with a new param so that you know that whenever something is changed over here, you get notified in your action function. And yeah, and then you can also provide a method called destroy in that object that you return. And that will be called when your diff, that element is being removed from the screen. Right, so the, the main idea of this file action is like this, right? So summarize a bit, uh, it's like you can write a function, which is which taking two parameter, element and a param, and this function will be called 
every time when you have an element that use this action, it's mounted. And then uh, when the params changes, your update method will be called. And if someone removes this div, for example, maybe due to if else, uh, like some condition you remove it or the whole component is being removed, then the destroy method will be called, right? So uh, what can we do with actions? So one simple example over here uh, is you can use it to integrate a UI library. Um, so I'm gonna now go step into a Svelte REPL, which we can, um, which I will do some like coding, like coding kind of thing where I can show you what, how it works, right? So um, all of this example I'm gonna show you now uh, and later will uh, all actually, I've actually done that, uh, did them uh, on my YouTube channel. If I'm not that clear, you can always watch them on my YouTube channel, right? Sorry with the plug, but let's go on. Right, so we have um, over here, I choose like this library, um, no reason, no particular reason. It's just that it says that it is a uh, date picker that is lightweight and powerful and it has no dependencies, right? So that's why I'm just like, can we integrate this with Svelte? Um, so probably you would need to import like flat picker and then do it, right? So uh, I'm gonna come here over here and uh, I'm gonna have a, but a button says date, date picker, right? So what you do over here is that if you want to, in, uh, if you read through, I, I've read through these docs, but if you skip, skip it through, what happens is that if you want to create a date picker out of your any elements, you just call a flat picker API from flat picker, and then you call it with that element, right? So this is um, usually how like a library without, uh, that is not tied to any like React or Angular would look like most of the case. Because if you are using React or Angular or Vue, then they will tell you that this is a component and use your component, right? But if you are like a, just vanilla JavaScript, then probably you'll say that if you want to make some elements like a date picker, then you'll pass in that element. All right, so I'm gonna copy, paste this in, import flat picker. And I need to call flat picker function with the element, which is this button, right? Uh, with like the button element. Oops. Let me zoom it up a bit. All right, so one way I can do it is that I can use actions because this is what I'm going to share today. So I can have an action. I'm going to just call any name I want, date picker, maybe. And it takes, so it's a function that takes in an element and a param, right? So to use this action, I'll just call use and then the same name, just make sure the name is the same. And I can choose to pass in parameters or not, right? If I'm not, then this param will be called with undefined. Uh, then I will call, flat picker over here. Uh, so this is the element that I have the flat picker. Um, then you will see that something happens. Uh, this button has become a date picker, except that um, the style is not there, right? So one thing I can quickly do is that um, according to this, I need to import this um, at the styles for flat picker. So I'm gonna paste this into the, over here, right? The style is in and yeah, you integrate with a library like that, right? So it's pretty easy, right? Pretty straightforward, I would say. Uh, and if you look closely over here, right? Uh, one thing that, uh, flat picker instance, one thing that probably would need to take notes of is that um, it says that there's like a destroy method over here in this library, meaning it will clean up like event listeners and stuff, which means that you also should do that, right? So let me like uh, time picker instance. Instance, I need to return a destroy method and I need to remember to call destroy, right? So when, so this will be called uh, this this destroy function will be called when your elements when your button is being removed. For example, if you have like 
if this component is being unmounted or maybe you have conditions like if uh, show or something, right? Uh, let's show equals true. If you have like something like this and show suddenly becomes false, this button is removed, then you need to clean up uh, all the event listeners for this flag picker, right? So, uh, so that's, that's why you need to add this destroy methods in your flag over here, right? And then probably let's take a look at some um, things. For example, our change, let's see, what, what can we do? Current month. Okay, so for example, if you change uh, set dates. Okay, so for example, maybe you can do something like uh, open and close over here shows open and close of the calendar. Uh, you call the open or close method, right? So that is something that we can do over here. Like say, for example, open, true. And then maybe we can pass that open or close in this as a parameter, uh, which means that if someone changes this variable, we would want to get notified. And the way we do it is we have a new params over here. Uh, and what we do here is that um, new param would actually will be the value of open. So if we know that it is like open, then we call an instance dot open. And if we know that it is false, then probably we just say instance dot close over here. Right. So you can basically do a lot of different kind of things, depends on like what you want to design as a parameters for your action. Um, so here, I gonna have, uh, I'm gonna have like a checkbox. Uh, bind check equals to open. Um, right, so if I uncheck, check, it will open and uncheck, this variable will change to false and then we'll close it, right? So that is it. Um, integrating, like you can use actions to integrate with other libraries, right? So I have other examples. Um, probably I may not have time to cover all of them, but I, I basically included links and the videos if you're interested. But I believe that there are just different um, use cases of actions, uh, but using it is pretty much straightforward as we can see over here. So let's take a look at one more example, which is like reusing event listeners, right? What I mean reusing over here is that um, if you take a look at this, so I have multiple examples, but I'm going to take a look at a third example over here, which is this one. Um, you can write, say, you can have an input and then you have a key down event listener where you listen to on key down. And as you type something, uh, you probably record the keys and then, you know, uh, if the keys matches with this combo, uh, then you will say unlocked, you will, you, you will set, like, you will set a variable unlocked to be true, something like that, right? So in this case, it's called, uh, uh, let me, let me think it's up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, and then the secret will unlocked, right? So you can use event listeners to do this, then basically, then probably you would have to define this uh, event listeners different multiple times, uh, maybe with a different unlock or maybe with a different secret or something like that. Um, so one way you can try to reuse this event listener is um, to have something like this, where you can use an action, uh, any name I can call. So I'm just calling secret combo action over here. And you can pass in like the secrets and the callbacks function, right? And you can change the secret value. Then basically this will be updated. The, uh, the, the, the action will be updated and know that uh, what is the new secret. And you can pass in a dynamic callback function, right? So here, uh, unlocked is true. This is, okay, this can be something else be true. And you can also uh, pass in different kind of secret, right? And this way, Basically, you encapsulate like the event listener kind of logic in one action, right? And the way of doing it is pretty much, is is, I would say rather straightforward. But it's, which is you would you take the elements, and then you call an event listener, 
And yeah, so th this is actually the same event listeners that we've seen earlier in uh, the previous code, right? It's the same event listeners, uh, except that previously you used on key down and now you have to manually kind of listen to that event by adding event listeners. And every time when you add event listeners, you also need to re remember to remove it on the destroy method. And now within the key down, you, yeah, I basically copy and paste the same code over here, except that this, I replace it with a callback. Right, so this this event listener adding event listeners thing is being encapsulated within like one action, and you can use this action across different uh, elements with different secret and with different callback. Right, um, and I guess I can still have time to go for the last last uh, example, which is it's just actually I would say um, one trick that I want to share with you all is that in the previous example, you've seen that I've created like a secret combo action, right? And I call a callback function over here when, when something happens. But actually, I, if, if I want, I don't have to do it this way. Um, I can actually um, do it like this, where I can listen to a custom event, uh, like on secret combo achieve. Right, uh, doing it this way means that um, it's, I don't know, probably it feels more uh, stylistically, it looks nicer, right? Uh, but also it kind of uh, decouples between the action and the events that you want to do something, right? And to achieve this is pretty, uh, it's, it's that you dispatch and custom events over here, right? You dispatch a custom events which the same the name that you want to listen, right? So let me show you some examples that this may be useful. Is that for example, you want to have a button that you can click three times and then do something like a triple click. Right? You click one, two, three, and then you should see something on the console, right? Uh, instead of having like an on-click listener and you have to implement that counting and then do your do it yourself, what you can do is you can add an action. And that action itself will define a new custom event, which is the triple click, right? So, uh, so it's, it's like you can tell people that, oh, I have written an action, you just use it. And then you can start to listen to a new event called a triple click. And the implementation of this triple click action is pretty much the same as what you have done using on click, except that you have to implement the listener yourself. And over here, you dispatch once it's you click twice, you dispatch a custom event called a triple click. Right, so yeah, this is, I'm like showing you examples of um, how you could use actions and the uh, examples or the ideas is uh, limitless, right? So the, just a summary again, your ex events, your actions is just a normal function that takes in the elements and probably a param that you can pass in. And yeah, this function will be called when your element is mounted. And if you return an object, it can contain two methods, which is update and destroy. And the update will be called when the params change and destroy is called when that element is removed from the DOM. And that is spelled action in essence. So any questions? Uh, yeah, I take questions if you have any. Oh. Thanks, Li Hao. That was amazing. I actually understood some svelte. Thank you. Uh, is there a question or chat? I see chat. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I just stuck your slides up. You answered my question. Oh. Uh, already, yeah. I was wondering if it was possible to pass in options from the element into the action function, mm. uh, but it's passing in parameters and it takes them at, at the beginning. Yeah, takes them at the beginning as well as in the update. Mm. Yes. That's great. I had a more, uh, have a more general question. Uh -huh. um, I was thinking of trying out some Svelte, uh, maybe some Svelte native. Mm -hmm. Why not? 
And I was just wondering if you had any recommendations for ESLint plugins that I should know about, or maybe VS Code plugins that you recommend. Ah, okay. Um, I believe both of them have uh, rather like official kind of plugins, right? So if you look for VS Code, I believe there's a VS Code spell plugin that is okay. official. Uh, let me see. Uh, it should be like when I say, yeah, you, you will see that it's it's like the publisher is spelled, right? Right. Yeah, not too, not too hidden. Yeah. Okay, so, I see so, that one. And do you use anything special for ESLint or you just use you just use this plugin for VS Code? Um, you could use a ESLint plugin for Spelt as well, which is also within like like the Spelt uh, okay. organization, right? So I, I believe this will give you like so-called official supports if you are worrying like not up to date and stuff. Okay, that's great. Thank you. And take a look at them. Nope. Hopefully, help catch my typos when I'm type. Ah, uh, yeah. When I type on click instead of on colon click and things like that. Yeah. So if you use a uh, spell of VS Code, it um, if you add something like. I can't remember, like, okay, so in your script text, you can probably write something like a length equals to TypeScript. Uh, it, it does not support in this repo, but if in your, in, your, in your VS Code, if you do it this way, then it will run like the TypeScript language server. Then you will also know more about like types, right? For example, yeah, it knows that this refers to like the variables and you are, are you passing in the right function and stuff and probably with Things like component props and stuff. Yeah. Basically, type checking. Right. Yeah, that's great. I will try that. Thank you. Welcome. Anyone else have any questions? Uh, seems like everyone is rather shy. Uh, not, I guess I can unshare my screen right now. Oops. Okay. Well, we can uh, we can jump into open mic now, and if anyone wants to talk about anything, they can do. And if you have a question for Li Hao, you can, I'm sure you can find him uh, on Telegram or on Twitter. So, like I said, um, my company is looking for a JavaScript engineer and uh, I'll, I'll put the link into the chat so if anyone is interested in. So the company is like, uh, the setup is full remote, so you could technically do work from anywhere as long as you're happy about it. So you can take a look and uh, just more like JavaScript and C++ engineer. That's it from my side. <laughs> Advertisement too much. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. We have a question for Li Hao or for anyone. How extensively is Svelte used? Um, I'm curious about what, what do you mean by extensively? Like, is it like what are the big companies that are using Svelte or like in what scenarios is Svelte being used or uh, probably I can answer either <laughs> uh, both questions, I guess. Uh, I mean, in terms of companies, uh, I, I don't really keep track of like all the companies is being in use, uh, using Svelte, but I like, I, 
like there, there's this like meet with Svelte or Svelte Society Twitter channel. They always they they have like uh showcases of uh what other like projects or companies is using Svelte, right? Um, so on top of my head right now, I can think of is uh I know like Apple is using like in some of their campaign sites. Um, uh, I guess someone found that they are hiring like Svelte engineers. That, that's how they found it. Uh, um, I, I guess like Google, I remember like there was like a few demos of them uh, using Svelte, right? So yeah, I mean, I, I don't promote like changing your code base overnight to from React or Angular or whatever to Svelte, right? I mean, yeah, so most likely people would do is probably with new projects they want to try out and they will try it out. And I guess it's just like slowly picking up uh, popularity and yeah, more people are trying out. That's why more people are, yeah, there are more, more kind of use cases are being showed. What, what I mean use cases would be like probably at first, uh, it's also because of like uh, Spell was like created by uh, Rich Harris, which was, which is a um, graphic designer in New York Times. So they do like the interactive uh, news, right? If you if you visit like news sites like New, New York Times or maybe even like Straits Times, you will see some of like interactive uh, charts and stuff, right? So they do, they did it. So, so at the very first, a lot of examples are those kind of things where a lot of like interactions and uh, visualization stuff. But recently I also see people doing like games stuff like a or maybe like a full blown dashboard and stuff. So it's I like in terms of like if you ask me whether technically it's possible, I think like technically it, it's kind of not much difference between React and Spell. You can do basically anything about like so it's like that there's no like limit on things that you, you can't or couldn't do, right? So yeah, so that that's about like how extensive spell is used. Hope that answers that question. And I see another question. So I guess it's us, uh, Amos Ang is asking whether spell interoperate well with the major frameworks like React. Um, I guess if you really want, you can have um, spell application within React and React application within spell, right? The same way of you could have like React within Angular and Angular within React or React within Vue, Vue within React. It is possible, right? You can write a wrapper components and that can be done, right? Whatever is inside is handled by Svelte, whatever is outside is handled by React, right? Uh, that is entirely possible. Like if you're really looking into something like that and you face problems or you don't know how to do it, then probably I can help you if you want, right? But I mean, why are you trying to do that? I'm not really sure. Oh yeah, so um, there, there's also another way of um, so-called micro front ends about like mixing multiple frameworks in one application, which is to use web components. I think some people would like package up like your component in like a web component and whatever inside is, um, uh, whatever inside is like, like web encapsulated within your web components. Um, so question is like React and Vue are libraries while Spec Angular are frameworks, right? Uh, I guess, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to answer this or say like, uh, I, to me, it feels they are like technicalities of like, what is your definition of libraries and frameworks? Uh, if you, if you means that, I mean, if you use React, the library, but you most likely would use other things together within a React ecosystem together with React, right? And Redux and stuff. And uh, it's, it's, it was, uh, okay. Uh, but anyway, you, you could, you could use React, Vue, Spell, Angular within each other. I believe it's possible. It's just, I, I, I believe there will be someone trying out and have a demo somewhere. Uh, yeah, as long as you have like a wrapper that nicely translates like one framework's API to another, it, it is entirely possible. It's just that whether, what's the purpose of doing so, right? Yeah. 
hope that I'm like not rambling over here. <laughs> I, don't know. I think they 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 can do some similar things. So uh, uh, you don't need to use one if you have the other because you can you could effectively do it in the one that you have already. But there might be a reason you want to use another one if if there's a very nice component published out there that somebody's already done a lot of work on and you want to use that in your app, but it's for a different framework. Mm. Yeah, but I but I find that most likely someone out there would go out and do the same component library right. using your framework of choice. I believe like it's using like React and Angular or Vue right now. Like popular frameworks out there right now, you run it like it's most likely you you wouldn't run in a chance of like having one library that does not support that does not have like a pot or wrapper in your framework. That that's what I feel. Yeah. Um for me I think these um like micro front end like stuff is not for uh like small application. It's like usually a big enterprise with uh, several team. So one team it might be very strong on Angular. And when you click into a navigation, it will load the Angular application. And this team is always doing Angular. And then, you know, another team might do React. And it's difficult to find an Angular engineer, for example, someone like me, for example. So uh, maybe uh, this, this is a reason, usually. Uh, it's just for a big company. For small, I don't see a reason for like putting multiple framework into a single application. But for a big enterprise, maybe they have reason for, for doing so. I'm just going to drop some links which I didn't share earlier on. Make it easier for people to reach. Um, I guess if if nothing I I'll, I'll be going off on my lid. Yeah, I guess so. Bye. <laughs> Thanks very much for your talk today. Welcome. Uh it's very quiet over here but yeah, I will see you all next meetup hopefully. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, thank you. Yeah, thanks so thank much you for all. coming. Bye. See you <laughs> next time. Bye. Thank you Chung. Thank you for hosting today. Yeah, and I thanks think to Alex. Michael too for the uh, host from Engineers SG. Okay, let's wrap it up then and um, uh, keep an eye on GitHub and meetup.com for next month. And if you have a talk, if you have something you want to share, please do drop it on our GitHub issue. Okay, bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye, Joey. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye.